The message for tonight is, uh, the title of the message is, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. And the text is from John chapter 1, verse 29. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. That's an amazing statement. Do you remember who John the Baptist is? He is like Elijah who came to prepare the way of the king. He prepared the way of the Lord, Yahweh. Jesus is Yahweh incarnate. We talked about a Sadie of God uh, last week. It's an amazing statement. If you could picture Yahweh, that absolute being, on the tree. Could there be a greater topic to talk about when you consider the the intensity and the content of that message, could you compare that to anything that you could gain or striving and thinking about in this world? You know, I'm so convinced, as I was talking and thinking today, the gospel message is the message we human beings, with our human tongues, it's got to be the most glorious message that we could we could utter and discuss. So I want to explain what Lamb of God means, okay? So I want to focus on the Lamb of God, which we may or may not know what that means. And the secondly, that takes away the sin, takes away from you, okay? So <clears throat> when the Bible says Jesus is the Lamb of God or the Lamb, I think the original audience of John the Baptist they knew exactly what, what he was mentioning. But we may or may not. Some of you may, may not even have a, a, ever seen a, a, a lamb. You know what a lamb is? It's a baby sheep. Probably you have never seen it. Okay? In fact, I have a picture. Okay? Who is this lamb? What do you mean, who? When he says lamb of God, it's who? It's Yahweh, that ultimate, absolute being, self-existent, independent, independent. I am who I am. That's the lamb. And do you see the posture? Do you see the four legs and feet are tied up? And yet, if you look at its face, it looks pretty comfortable. That's weird. Can I try to tie you up, see how your face changes? But this is... Our Yahweh God, which is an amazing, amazing message. So what does it mean when the um, Bible says he's the Lamb of God? Could it be referring to the Lamb of God of Isaiah 53? I'm going to skip a little bit for the time's sake. Or are we talking about Passover Lamb, Paschal? You know, Hebrew, uh, uh, the Jews say, they don't say Passover Lamb. They say Passover, Paschal, right, of that incredible redemption story of Exodus? Or could it be the lamb that was slain every single day, morning and evening for sin offering? Which one is it in the, of the Old Testament? And the answer is all of them. Jesus is the fulfillment and the replacement of the entire Old Testament sacrificial system. Entire sacrificial system. In other words, all the sacrifices in the Old Testament were the shadows and uh, copies of the real thing. So I want, us to know, I want us to consider what is sacrifice? What is the sacrificial system? What is the concept? Some of you may know, some of you may not know. So I want to I explain it. Well, first of all, sacrifice is a worship offering to God. It's the Old Testament worship offering to God. And that relationship exists, and that exists because of the relationship between God and man that's called covenant. We've been talking about this. Covenant relationship is God's grace. Out of all different people and the people groups, God has chosen Israel as my people. No other reason than because God has chosen them because God loved them. Okay? In other words... Everything started with grace. If you just follow, right? 
So I'm going to be your God and you'll be my people. And I'm going to give you the law. That's what the law is. Law is from the Lord, which portrays the attributes of God. Okay? And then within that law that builds and establishes the relationship, there are sacrifices and offering, which included the animal sacrifice. What did the animal sacrifices do then? Basically, it is to bring reconciliation. Reconciliation. Meaning something has been broken, now it has been reconnected. Reconciliation. Okay? Or peace. Why? Because what keeps the relationship going is the law and obedience. But human beings cannot obey the law. You see? And they broke, uh, they broke the law, break the law, disobey, therefore they crimed or sinned. What happens if you break the law of the United States? Let's say you cheated on something. You smuggled, uh, I guess marijuana doesn't work anymore, right? Uh, cocaine. And you get caught with five kilo. What's going to happen to you? You will be penalized according to the law. Okay? Because you offended the law and you offended God. That's what it means. So by this, God's... Uh, given way to reconcile and restore. That's what animal sacrifice is. And how does that work? Could you just think with me? Animal dies, but you get, you get the blessing. How does that work? Right? Animal dies for your disobedience, your crime, your sin. In other words, animal is being uh, killed or dying because of the crying for the atonement. The key word is atonement. Remission of sin. Why? Bible says the penalty of sin or crime is death. If you die in your sin, you will, you're going to have to pay for it. That's what Jesus said. Some of you will die in your sin. Right? So penalty needs to be paid. And how do you pay the penalty? What is the penalty? The Bible is very, very clear. Without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It is through the shedding of blood, which means your death. Death is the penalty before the holiness of God. Okay? So it is by giving the life or by death of the animal, the pain, uh, the penalty is paid. How is animal's death pays for you then? You know what it is? This is the main concept of sacrifice. Animal is dying for you. Animal is dying in place of you. Animal is dying instead of you. That's the key understanding of the gospel of the Lamb of God. Okay? In other words, animal is the sacrifice. Animal is sac uh, substituting for you. In other words, to iterate, it, it really is, it should be you because you are the one who, who offended God, and you are the one who offended God's law, but instead of you paying the law and die forever, the animal dies. See, what is, see what's going on? Sacrifice, therefore, is a way to save you. That's what sacrificial system is. That is why sacrificial system is grace. In fact, God making a covenant with you is grace. Isn't it? Out of all the people in the world, 70 billion people, God has chosen you. What did you do to deserve that? Right? I want to explain something very, very peculiar in the sacrificial system. In the uh, sacrificial system, there is a custom that is kind of intriguing. When I bring an animal... To the, to the priest of the temple, the priest asked me to put my hands upon the animal. Can you picture this? My Snoopy. I do that a lot. You know, he's getting old. <laughs> I put my hands upon the animal. And what, what is going on? Can, can you picture that? What does that mean? Leviticus 1.4 says, He shall lay his hands on the head of the animal, of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him 
to make atonement for him. Do you hear it? What's going on is, whatever that means, God accepts it, and it's for him, twice for him. That's what sacrifice is. Now, if you consider the mechanic, what's the magic? I put my hands upon the animal for my sin, and it dies, and I am atoned. What's the magic? What happened to the sin? What's the gesture? What does that symbolize? When I put my hands upon the animal, somehow my sin is transferred to the animal. Do you see it? That takes faith. That takes faith, right? That's what faith is. Animal is dying for me, and if I put my hands upon the animal, somehow my sin, my million sin, is transferred to that animal. It has been imputed upon the animal. That's what, this, uh, that's what it is. What's the procedure? You bring the uh, animal for sacrifice and worship to the temple, give to the priest, and priest slain the animal, collect the blood, and blood is taken to God on behalf of you. That's what the priest is doing. What's his role? He stands between the holy God and sinful man and connects the two. That's what priest is. Okay? And when God sees the blood, his wrath and demand of the law is satisfied and propitiated and sin is in remission and be satisfied. That's what's going on. And the relationship between God and his people are restored. Okay? There are three most important components of the sacrifice. Number one, priest and the temple. Can you picture this? Priest and the temple. Secondly, animal, the lamb. Thirdly, the blood. Okay? Now we are coming to the New Testament. We just talked about Old Testament sacrifice. Now we want to talk about New Testament sacrifice called the gospel. Okay? And the book of Hebrews is exactly what that, that is doing. Compares the Old, Old, Old Testament sacrifice, sacrificial system with the New Testament sacrificial system. Compare the two and tells you what is better. Okay? That's what the book of Hebrews is. Okay? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4 says, It is impossible for the blood of the bull and the goats to take away sins. Did you hear that? It is impossible. It does not say it is less effective. It does not say it is a little bit less effective. It is impossible for the Old Testament sacrifice to take away the sin. That's why they had to do it over and over and over again. You know why? Because it doesn't work. Nothing works in this world. Any human sacrifice, any sacrificial system is not going to work. Then what's the purpose of the Old Testament sacrificial system? Two very important things. It reminds you of your sin. Oh, man, I'm going to have to do this again next year. If I'm alive, I'm going to have to do it again. It reminds you of your sin. Okay? But it's really the pointer for the real thing. The New Testament sacrifice of Calvary. Okay? That's where it begins. How does that replace the entire Old Testament sacrifice? Do you remember on Thursday night before Jesus went to the cross? As he was breaking the bread and having that Passover meal with his disciples. And he, he takes the cup. He said, this is a new covenant in my blood. Do you hear the language? We heard about covenant. We heard about, we heard about blood. And Jesus is saying, the Lamb of God is saying, this is the new covenant, brand new covenant in my blood, referring to the sacrifice of Calvary, referring to the blood of the Lamb of God. So here's the new sacrificial system. What does he represent? Temple priest, animal lamb, Blood, what does it represent? Jesus is everything. Jesus replaces everything. Do you hear it? 
You may be going to church for many, many years. <laughs> you have no idea. He replaces everything. Entire Old Testament. Okay. It says in Hebrews chapter 2, he's the merciful and faithful priest. And he's the high priest. And he's not just a high priest, but he's a perfect high priest. Why? In the Old Testament, all the priests, they were sinful, so they had to sacrifice for themselves. That's why it was, it was just so redundant. But Jesus, the high priest, has no sin whatsoever. Three, 33 years of perfect obedience to the law, and he has, that, he has established the perfect righteousness. With that perfectness, perfect righteousness, he is the priest who takes the blood from the sacrifice to God. He's a perfect, perfect priest. Secondly, Jesus is the lamb. And it's not just any lamb, but he's the lamb of God who is perfect. Who's perfect. Without blemish, without defect. Perfection. Perfect priest, perfect lamb. Okay? What happens when he offered Hebrews chapter 10, verse 12 says, But when Christ had offered his body, can you picture that? Can you picture the cross? For all time, a single sacrifice for sins, now he sat down at the right hand of God. And by a single offering, he has perfected for all time. One sacrifice. One sacrifice, God counts. And that's the sacrifice you and I must come to. It's one single sacrifice. What does that mean? It's a perfect sacrifice. Cross is perfect sacrifice. And it's single sacrifice. And it's for all time. Your past, present, and your future. Can I just tell you a story? What happens if you get dementia later on and you cannot recognize people? Could that be a possibility? I've seen people, Christians, get dementia. Cannot even recognize his own family members. In fact, one of my family members, who was an elder for about 40 years of a church, got dementia, and he couldn't even recognize his own family members. What happens, what happens to him? A lot of people have questions like that. And I'm convinced Salvation is by grace and grace alone. And forgiveness is by the blood of Jesus and Jesus' blood alone. It covers past, present, and future. Okay? One single sacrifice. It's done. It's completed. What is he doing now? He's sitting at the right hand of God. Can I just give you a little preview? Jesus Christ died for your sin. And Jesus Christ raised for your sins, your, res uh, your, your salvation. Did you know that? Jesus is eternal God. He doesn't need resurrection. He doesn't need death. He doesn't need incarnation. He doesn't need anything. He came for us, and he died for us, and he was raised for us, and he's going to come back for us. Can I just give you this picture? When he was raised, you know he has a body, right? He has a nail marks. And uh, spear marks, and he has this body, resurrected body, go right through the walls, and he ate. Now he ascended with the body. He's sitting on the throne with the body. And Jesus is coming back with the body. It will be bodily resurrection. Did you know that? What happens to you when you die as a Christian? This is what happens. Your spirit goes to presence of God right, right away. You are in the presence of the Lord. Your body goes to, to the grave. And it will be decomposed. Maybe unrecognizable. Right? What happens to unbelievers when they die? They go to Hades right away. The body goes to, uh, to the grave. 
Bible says, though, this is what's going to happen. When Christ returns, there's going to be a resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection. It's a, it's a historical fact you're going to see. When he returns, believer's body will be united with the spirit of the believers, and the body will be same as Jesus's resurrected body. I find that amazing. If you believe in that, could there be a greater topic to talk about? We love to talk about this and that, meaningless things, right? There's going to be a resurrection, okay? Now he, he is sitting on the throne of God with his resurrected, glorified body, and he's going to come back. And you know what's going to happen to our body when we are resurrected? There is no more aging, no more sickness. Isn't that great? No more dementia, no more cancer, no more degradation. It's an incorruptible body, imperishable body, glorified body, just like Jesus. Okay. I want to talk about blood. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You're going to need blood, but there is only one blood that's going to wash your sin. It's not going to be any lamb. It has to be the Lamb of God, Jesus, perfect Lamb of God, perfect blood. Hebrews 9, 12 says, He entered once and for all into the holy place, not by the means of the blood of the goats and calves, but by the means of His own blood, securing an eternal redemption. How much more? with the blood of Christ through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purifying our conscience for dead works to serve the living God. You know, people may go to church for years, but don't, they just don't have the uh, just feeling of pure conscience. Do you have it? I really ask you. Do you feel like you need to Work so much harder. You do not understand this gospel sacrifice of the Lamb of God. This blood purifies your conscience. You will not feel the demand of the law anymore condemning you. There is no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. This blood, this sacrifice of Calvary purifies your conscience. It's his only blood. What can wash my blood? A sins away. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Do you have purity of conscience? Okay. That's why he's the only mediator, only, ma only mediator between holy God and humanity. There is no other way. That's why Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Okay. What's the outcome? Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus, only by the blood, people, only by the blood of Jesus, by this new and living way that He be opened for us through the curtain, what imagery do you see? When Jesus died on the cross, there are some... Uh, Supernatural things happened. Dead people were risen in Jerusalem. And the dark cloud covered the whole, whole uh, city. There are all kinds of stuff, but there is one thing that really is striking, striking the point. There is a temple, a Jerusalem temple, and once, once you walk into the temple, there is a place called Holy of Holies where the presence of God is. And there's the one curtain that divides Holy of Holies and the rest of the temple. And when Jesus died on the cross, that curtain has been torn from top to bottom. Schizo. When else did it happen? Do you remember when Jesus was baptized? The, the heaven was torn open. Schizo. Curtain was 
torn open. You will never be able to close it again. And that curtain is his body. That's his body. We could enter into the presence of God, and Jesus is the only way. Amen? Could you say amen? Like Christians, could you say amen? amen. By the way, amen is Jesus' name. You shouldn't be ashamed of saying amen. Jesus' name is amen. Okay? One more place you will see the Lamb of God. When everything is done, everything is done, and history is closed, all the nations and all the people group will be gathered together and worshiping. Millions of millions of people will be worshiping this person who is sitting on the throne. You know who that person is? Lamb of God that was slain. I don't know whether you get excited about this kind of message. Some of you look tired. As I was preparing this message, man, if this is real, there is nothing that could be compared to this message in this world. You're going to become a president of the United States of America. Could that be compared to this message? I saw an animal sacrifice on YouTube. They still do it. Some crazy people still do it. Jews don't do it anymore, by the way. You know how they kill animals? They slay in the neck. I don't know whether you see it. The neck has been slain. Lamb of God, who was slain. And that's Yahweh, people. That's Yahweh. I want to close. So, listen up, please. You must do something about the cross. A.W. Tozer, you must do something about the cross. You cannot just brush it off. You will not. Something that you cannot do when you stand before the cross is stay neutral and just brush it off. You will never be able to do that. He said, there are only one of the two things you can do. One, you just flee from it. And two, you die upon it. Which one are you? Remember in the Old, uh, Old Testament sacrificial system, when the offerer bring the animal, you could put your hands upon the animal. Now, stay with me. You could put your hand upon the Lamb of God. Oh, I don't think I could do that. That's God. And put my hands upon the head of, the, head of God. I don't think I could do that on Changnonim. I think I'll be uncomfortable doing that. But what are you doing? You are transferring. You are believing. You are believing the Lamb. That Lamb is dying for me. And my sin has been transferred. Would you do that? Or are you, gonna, are you, are you just going to flee? If you flee, you will die forever. You will die forever. If, let, if, if you let him die, you will live forever. Bible clearly says, unless you put your faith in the Lamb of God, you will die twice. Second death. And the second death, you will die forever, and you will never die. So brothers and sisters, this is what Christ has done. This is the gospel message, the Lamb of God. May this message will drive your life. Okay? Let's just pray together.